Checkity check. Chinese chicken. Isn't that a song from Chuckety the 90s? Chuck, Chinese chicken? Something, something, the Chinese chicken. Never heard of it. You know what I'm talking about. I don't. I really don't. I'll find it. I'll play it for you. I have to, no, I'm good. <laughs> from Straw Hut Media. <laughs> this is Brandy Glanville on the film. Hey, Ryan, welcome to my house. Thanks for having me. How are you? Good. I need more caffeine. I'm tired. Yeah, I'm, I have. I had a bad sleep last night myself. Um, yeah. Do we have we have a lot of work today to do? Yes. And we have our happy hour later as well. I know. I got to get home to prep for it. Yeah. <laughs> I have to take a little <laughs> nap and maybe eat. Yeah, my stomach is growling. But um, yeah, I haven't eaten anything either. Me either. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, but first today we're going to talk to Miami housewife Alexia. So I know I like I kind of know her because I met her a long time ago at Brent's and we had like a hug and she's so sweet and beautiful. Um, and I want to talk to her because I feel like this season. Yeah. I know you don't watch Housewives. Yeah. But she has real authentic drama. Like I, I don't know if like, you knew. No, you don't know anything, don't know. <laughs> but she, there was a Netflix special that dropped. I think it was called cocaine Cowboys. Don't quote me on that. Wait, for, there is a net, there is a Netflix is. show called cocaine Cowboys. Yeah, but I'm not sure if that's the name of it, but it's okay. about her life and her husband and her baby daddy. And she's in it and she's talking about what happened and it just made her more interesting to me. Um, is, so does that come up in the show? Does it come up? Not, I mean, on, on housewives. Is it, does that whole, it hasn't yet. Oh. So I haven't seen it yet, but I'm kind of shocked that it hasn't yet. But these people are kind of <laughs> self-involved. Yeah. Um, but I just love her honesty. She shares everything. She's authentic. She doesn't speak out of like for no reason. Do you know what That's I mean? That's good. That's good. So I want to talk to her and I want to ask her. She had been married to a man that was bisexual. And how many marriages did she have? This is, this is a separate man, not the yeah, cocaine separate. cowboy guy. I think she. They think she's on her third. She just got married. I think three. Wow. Three's the charm. I'm telling she you. She is. Oh my gosh, what a life. She's beautiful though. So I mean, and she's beautiful on the inside and out because if one of the things that you're going to learn about happened to you or I, yeah, we would be in straight jackets. Okay, let's talk to this lady. Let's get <laughs> on. Alexia, oh my gosh, welcome and congratulations on your wedding. Thank you, Brandy. Oh my gosh, I was so excited. I, I really thought like watching the show that it was not going to happen. It seemed like everything that could go wrong possibly was going wrong. Yes, I agree. So that's why it was more about like Todd and I just having this moment between him and I. We needed it. We needed it as a couple. You know, we needed it just like you know, for ourselves. And that's like yeah. what we did. You know, we decided to elope, just him and I, and go to St. Bart's and just get married and just enjoy the weekend and enjoy each other. And and that's it. And we'll celebrate with our friends and family soon here because, you know, we still have the wedding venue and like everything else that we did, right. you know, for the wedding. But it's just like it was such hard months, you know, like three, four, five months that we had. Yeah that we just like we we needed a happy ending we wanted to start 2022 like as a married couple and you know and it's been great since then maybe that's all we needed to do yeah i really think uh, yeah i mean weddings are i mean i wasn't stressed out because i just hired someone and i'm very like hands off i'm like whatever you want to do <laughs> so i'm like a dude chick i'm like i don't care um, right. but no but in general weddings are so stressful and then to do it on tv as well so there's all these pressures and then like people starting fights about it or what it just it just seemed like it wasn't meant to be that way and the way you right. did it was the way it was supposed to be I agree. Amen to that. That's exactly yes. how we said it to ourselves too. That's exactly what we said because we did try so many times yeah. and I even got COVID one of the times that I had to propose, postpone my wedding. And then, you know, the second time my mom. So it was just like, you know what, for whatever reason, the universe doesn't want this to happen. And, you know, and it will happen when it's time for us for it to happen. And that's exactly how it was. We just like decided, you know what, we're going to elope. We're gonna, let's just be about you and I. And that's how we did it. 
Well, congratulations. And I'm sorry to hear about your mom and his father. And we'll just try to keep this on a positive note, but yes. I'm sorry. And I think you did the right thing starting 2022, just like happy couple. So let's mm-hmm. get into the show a little bit. When yes. they called you and they said, we're going to do it again, were you like, I'm on board? Or were you kind of like, I don't know? <laughs> well, you know, there's something that we all of us really wanted, like secretly. And we always believed it would come back, especially me. But then when you actually get the call, you're like, oh, shit, it's happening. So, um, you know, again, like you, you still I felt exactly the same thing I felt in season one when I was asked, you know, to, to be on the show. So eight years later, you know, I'm still feeling the same thing. You know, it's like excitement with right. my nerves and like, you know, butterflies in your stomach and all that. But, you know, I was definitely very excited because I thought, you know, this is like really big. I mean, it's like. I don't think there's ever been another franchise that has been off TV for eight years. Yeah. And has done like a comeback. So of course I wanted to be part of, of the comeback. And um and I wanted to showcase the city. You know, Miami's more popular than ever. So everybody wants to be here, everybody wants to live here, have a property here, vacation here. So, you know, it, it made a lot of sense to bring back Miami and to do it now. Yeah, I really, um, I didn't really understand why it left, to be honest, but that's, I mean, we all have our opinions. Um, right. Was your hus- was your fiance on board when you told him it was going to happen? So, I mean, it's interesting because he is and he was on board because he had never really watched the shows. So he's like, oh, he thought it was fun. Like when he met me, you know, I had obviously done the show already. So I was like a TV personality and he had never watched the show but we start dating and he starts seeing that people are recognizing me and asking me for pictures and asking me about my kids. So he was like, Oh, like that must be really weird. Like to be on TV and like for people to ask you about your family and blah, blah, blah. So he, it was like, he met me already. So yeah. You know, already knowing me like that. So he was okay with it. But when it actually happened, he was like, Oh, like, I don't know about this. And you know, like all first time husbands that are, are part of the show, um, you know, they, they never really like it. You know, when they see, after, when they see themselves on TV, they're like, yeah, yeah they're like, uh, no, all the guys want to go to the corner and just bro down. This episode is brought to you by Cerebral. Cerebral is an online mental health service that offers prescription medication, counseling, and therapy for anxiety, depression, ADHD, insomnia, and so much more. And Cerebral is different from other mental health subscriptions because you can actually get prescription medication online through a licensed provider. It ships the medication right to your door and you get unlimited messaging with your care team through the mobile app. So you can access your team wherever and whenever you need them. No more long waiting periods to connect with your providers. And since you can do sessions on your laptop, on your phone, on your iPad, that means no more uncomfortable waiting rooms where everyone probably thinks you're crazy. We're not all crazy. I mean, just me. Cerebral offers affordable treatments that are one third the price of traditional therapy. And while you don't need insurance to be able to access this service, they are in network for a lot of insurance companies. So you can do it with or without insurance and save your, you know, trip to the, who wants to go to Kaiser right now with everyone having COVID. So if you are out of network, they do provide the paperwork for you to easily be able to submit a claim. Listen, just for my listeners of my program, you can receive 65% off of your first month of medication management and care counseling at getcerebral.com slash brandy. Go to cerebral.com slash brandy, cerebral.com slash brandy for 65% off your first month. That's just a total of $30 to get started. Join Cerebral today on their mission to make quality mental health care accessible and affordable for all. But I have to say, he kept it. Your family kept it really real. And that's the kind of, that's what I want to watch. I don't want to watch people fighting over bedrooms. Like that kind of shit just drives me I nuts. I agree. But do you see, thank you, Brian. Do you see why I don't do that? I mean, I have to like, when in this case, when we're in the Hamptons, I have to like tell you, are you serious? Are you fighting about a bedroom? Like right. we all live in big houses and in big bedrooms. This is like a girl's trip. You want to have fun. Who gives a shit about the, the room, right? So like you, like I never really participate with, you know, in in that nonsense because like I have other things to worry about. 
and mm-hmm. like that like you know my family like this is like what right. I really you, have, you have real shit happening and not exactly we don't need to fight mm-hmm. over our bedroom I thought I, mean, I thought mm-hmm. I mean it happens every season to on every franchise and I literally was like I'll sleep wherever because I'm just gonna right. go pass out and wake up I mean it's it's just it's so trivial what came from that is I think that what I saw was Lisa and I kind of know her a little bit um really I think she's hurt. I mean, she talked about have her husband having an emotional affair on the show and she doesn't seem happy. She doesn't seem like her normal self. And I feel like everyone just kind of thought she was being a diva and she was, but mm-hmm. I don't, I feel like she's a little broken and I feel I have, right. like I feel sorry for her in a way. Right. Well, if you look at it, like how you're putting into those words and you, you know, you deep, you dig a little deeper you know, it, it could make sense, but she right. never told us that. So, you know, we can't say something like uh, that because right. she said it on the show. You guys like she said, right. No, oh, I mean, she did. Well, she said it on the show to her, but to on an interview. So like, it's different, but we, oh. that conversation was never really brought up. Like, like, let's say at a dinner table or like, or amongst friends. So she never really addresses that situation with her friends, with, with us. Oh, so she maybe just wanted to get in front of it, put it out there, say, I know this is happening or it happened and right. then like not give light to it. But she still seems very broken. And I didn't know that. Like, I'm, you know, the season's not over yet. I just assumed right. that you guys were all because everyone talks about everything. Right. So I thought one of the assholes is going to bring it up. Right. <laughs> no, like, but you know what? Surprisingly <laughs> enough, it wasn't surprisingly enough that we're just bringing up Lars's stuff. Yeah. That, I mean, For yeah, that is reason. very bizarre. Yeah. I would right. def- I mean, I would have probably put it out there, like just to say, listen, she's hurting too because of this. But you know, you can't do a show like this and have skeletons. But the skeletons. thing is that we didn't know that, Brandy. When we I, have, so when we go to the Hampton, you know, we we didn't see the show till after. Right. So we didn't know that Lisa had said that in her interview. That's that's the only time she brings it up in an interview. But and obviously, we you, saw the scene. Right. Right. But had you guys heard rumors, or did any were people talking about it, or no? No. No. Nobody's been really? talking about it. I mean, this is something like she says that happened years ago, many years ago. And, you know, that they were having, you know, problems as a couple, which many people can relate to that. And it was something that happened very short lived. It was just that. And um, and that's it. But many years ago. So it's kind of like, why talk about it now? You know, why bring up the past now? So I don't know myself why she did that, why she said that in her interview. Like, I wouldn't have said that. I have because a feeling you know, every that, time you say something, you got to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you give energy to it. But that said, she probably figured that somebody knew something and she wanted to say it before it became a storyline. And because if you have bad shit happening, it's best to just say it before right. it, before the drama starts. Right. Because you know, then there's speculation. Us, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I've been there, but no, I do appreciate like watching you guys because I feel like you guys are pretty authentic. You especially are very authentic. You mm-hmm. show you know the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think you're so strong. I'm a single mom of two boys too. And if I had gone through maybe even one of the things that you've been through in your life. I would be in a straight jacket somewhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I watched that Netflix special about your ex and I yes. saw your, I had zero idea. And it was just so interesting. I'm like, this bitch, not bitch, but like in a good <laughs> way. No, in a good way. Has, yeah, has lived a, like a million lives. You have really, you're so interesting. And do, do most of the girls already know about like that life? Well, they kind of did, but you see, this is what happens. It's funny because like I even like talking to you, and I and I love that you have like interest in certain things, like myself. So, like for example, I thought that we were filming when the docu series for Netflix came out, which was a big surprise to me, by the way, because this was an interview that I did like nine years ago, right. which never thought you know was going to be on, on on any kind of show. I thought it was just like somebody gathering information, and you know, my ex husband was the father of my kids. I wanted to support him to help him. He's like, oh, please, just a couple of hours. At the time, I was still married to Herman. Actually, Herman went with me. And he always got along very well with my the father of my kids. So right. he said, of course, like we'll go together. You should do whatever you can to help him. And then nine years later, the day before the release, I get a text that I'm like in some trailer for Netflix. And I was like, oh, my God, does that work that way? I was actually in the Hamptons, Brandy, when I somebody sent me the trailer. <laughs> And I was like, oh, my God, like, I'm in trouble. Like, Todd didn't even know it. Neither did I. I mean, it was a big surprise to all of us. So anyhow, 
um, I thought that the girls would say bring it up, right? If you right. would have been on the show, you would have Yeah, no, up but me, I, right? I thought it was positive. I thought it was right. like just such an interesting story. And we all I fall agree. in love with bad boys on occasion. I've been yes. there. We've all been there. Yeah. Don't you hate keeping track of your free trials and you forget and then they renew and charge on your card and it's really without your consent because you forgot and they know you're going to forget. So it's a big giant trick. This is a business scam where greedy corporations get into your pocket and take your money. Don't fall into their trap like I have. Download Truebill to take control of your subscriptions. This is so important. They will nickel and dime you to death. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that sometimes you don't even know that you have or that you no longer need or want or simply forgot that you signed up for and forgot to cancel. The average Truebill user saves over $720 a year, and that's like vacation money. Companies also make it so hard to cancel your subscriptions, which makes me crazy. And Truebill makes it easy. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions. So you don't have to. So you're not on the phone for four hours a day and trying to get upsold for some other thing that you don't want. So Ryan actually found out that he was paying monthly for two Dropbox accounts. And obviously he only needs one and some odd weird subscription to a horror movie channel ryan's afraid of his own shadow so that's definitely not something he would sign up for so it was just weird but he's already saving 30 dollars a month don't fall for subscription scams start canceling today at truebill.com brandy go right now truebill.com brandy it could save you thousands a year truebill.com brandy And I think too, like with COVID and everything, they ran out of a lot of content. So things that we filmed like a long right. time ago that we thought would never come out are just like hitting, like coming out and we're all like, what the right. fuck? <laughs> yeah, like, why? Was, right. So that's how I felt. But these girls, like, that's what I'm saying. Like that would have been something generic because organically it was happening in real time. It was coming right. out. And nobody even asked me about anything. Like it was like none of the girls, you know, were we, we didn't talk about that. And even on my bachelorette, which, you know, you'll see, um, I thought the perfect setting, Versace Mansion, Ocean right. Drive, like <laughs> back in the day, the 80s, the 90s in Miami. But no, like nobody even brought that up either because you'll see other things that they brought up, but nothing well, to do they're with all me, kind of, I mean, a lot of them are uh, very self-involved, I will say. Not not everyone, but I right. feel like they're so into the show and making a splash or a moment for themselves that they're not interested in real life. And what's interesting to me is real life. Like, I, I want to talk about that. I didn't know that. Yes. I was yeah. like, oh my gosh. And my yes. kids are half Cuban because my ex-husband's Cuban. So I was like, I'm Cuban too. This is my favorite. But I know. I remember that. I remember when I met you, Brandy, we were at the upfronts. I mean, this was years ago, probably 2011. And Frankie had had the accident. It was like season two or three. And you came to me and you hugged me. We were drinking at the hotel. Andy was there with us. Nini was like all of us at the hotel. And you hugged me and you were like crying. You're like, I'm a mom of two boys and I'm a single mom. And my husband's cute. You know, it's Cuban. And, you know, I can relate to you. And, like, you said, like, such beautiful words. I'll never forget. Like, you were, like, one Aww. of the first ones that I met. It was, like, my second season. And um, and you said, like, really beautiful words. And you related to me. You were, like, I can feel you. Like, you like, we have similarities. And, like, it's so hard, you know, to be a mom. And I liked bad boys like you. And, like, you know, we try to fix them. And then the only people we heard are ourselves. But I, whatever. So we we had that moment years ago. No, and I, I know. I no, me too. Mm -hmm. And I like when I when I saw that it was coming back on, which I never really thought it should be off. I was wondering, do you miss any of the OGs, like the original gangsters from like the past seasons? Like, let's say Joanna and Lisa. <laughs> right. No. Well, I mean, Joanna was only on season two and three and I was never like close to her because I didn't really find her Miami. You know, I liked her right. and I thought, you know, but it, it wasn't like. Miami so I never kind of like got close to her in my season two and three you know ended up again because it's my reality and the show right. you know showcases my life that happened to my son so I took like a very different position in the show I wasn't involved as much but psychologically I couldn't do right. it it was very hard for me 
and whatnot. So I never really considered her like an OG, you know, even though she did season two and three. And Leah did three seasons, but um, nobody's missing her. That's the truth. No. <laughs> no, nobody's missing her. I never got that either. I really never thought she belonged either because like she, she doesn't like women. She doesn't have friends. She doesn't like to, you know, you can have a difference of opinion and say something, but like, I don't right. feel like she connects with women. It, it was always like weird. So, and then, you know, Marisol's back, you know, as a friend, but she's very involved. She has a very big Wait, presence. Wait, Marisol's only a friend? Because I, I love Marisol and I feel yeah. like she's always on my screen. Yes, right? Well, she's definitely there and she has a huge presence. But for yeah. whatever reason, they, they didn't make her a housewife and Adriana's a friend too. But, you know, I, I tell them, like, don't get so concerned with the title. No. Because it's really, it's just a title. It doesn't because, mean anything because I didn't even know either of them were just friends because they're getting just as much camera time as absolutely. all of the other women. So right. yeah, you know, I mean, like it is it is something you don't want to. I mean, I was a friend the first season and I basically was in every scene. <laughs> like, right. Like, That's can, what I'm saying. Can I get paid? <laughs> right. But, <laughs> That's no, what Marisol I mean, says. So yeah, it doesn't yeah. really determine anything. And then from season one, we have Larsa back. So I'm happy to have Larsa back. Right. Now, so did, out of from all of the girls from the beginning, did you the, did you keep in touch with Larsa? Did you keep in touch with um, Lisa, or was it kind of like yes. you just went your separate ways? Right. No. So after season three, um, Lisa and I got close because you know we go to all those same cool places in Miami, the same restaurants. We both live on the beach, so you know I had events, and you know I continued to have the magazine. So we we kept on seeing each other everywhere. And it's funny because like the view, like fans would see us at restaurants and we were like hug and kiss. And like, we always wanted to hang out and our fans would come up to them. They're like, Oh, you two really like each other. Like we thought that was all fake. <laughs> and we're like, no, it's like real bitch. Like we really, but we've gone to this point, you know, like the right. end of season three, it's kind of seen that we didn't like each other. So anyways, so with Lisa, that Marisol, I just continued to become even better friends with her. Larsa moved to Chicago. And then to L.A. So then, but when she was in Miami, she would always text me. I would always, if I had a party going on, she would come. You know, we've always been, like, friendly, um, Larsa and I. And the rest yeah. of the girls, the same, Marisol, Adriana, Lisa, Larsa. And then the other girls that are the new addition to the group, they're, um, they're, they've been a great addition because I also knew them from Miami. And, um, and you know, the shows needs new people. This episode of Brandy Glanville Unfiltered is sponsored by That's It Nutrition. That's It makes delicious, convenient, plant-based super snacks from only the purest ingredients. These snacks are all natural, non-GMO, and preservative-free with no added purees or juices or concentrates, literally fruit from the tree made into a healthy snack. They make fruit snacks that are actually 100% real fruit. That's It Nutrition offers a broad range of convenient on-the-go snacks with all items containing six ingredients or less. And I'm not sure if you know how hard that is to do, but they are all completely free from the top 12 allergens, which make them completely school safe. And my kids have allergies. These are snacks with no secrets, unlike housewives. The ingredients on the front match the ingredients on the back match the ingredients in your stomach. For simple, recognizable ingredients in portable, convenient formats, you can find That's It nationwide at your local Starbucks and major retailers such as Target, Walmart, Whole Foods, and Costco. And of course, online at Amazon and That's It Fruit.com. Head over to That's It Fruit.com slash Brandy and use code Brandy, B-R-A-N-D-I, to receive 20% off your first order. But it is nice to, like, a lot of people, like, the season's over, I'm done, I'm not talking to you. Like, I say, like, you know, I had real friends. I had, like, Kim and Yolanda. That's my, like, just because the camera shut down, we still have these friendships, but everyone else is like, oh, we need breaks, we're out, we're done. And I'm like, uh, yeah. then they get back together. And I'm like, wait, you guys haven't seen each other all season? This isn't real friendship. Right, was no, like, huh. I know. Well, that's what I always loved about you, that you were so real, because you're right, the, a lot of, the women are like that the season's over and they don't talk again. It's kind of, well, I feel like the first week or two, we kind of really didn't need a break from each other. Yeah. I we need a break. Yeah. 
Yeah, right? a break it's not for so much sure. From the person, but just from like the whole show and the whole thing, you wanted to kind of like just be yeah. by yourself and with your family. And then afterwards, we like picked up again, and we were like, and we're good. And I feel like all the girls now, like we really like each other. So like we really do want to hang out and be with each other, and you know, and, and do fun things. We all like the husbands like each other. Um, so it's it's a good place because I feel like these shows. That's what really works. Yeah, I mean, no, you have a you, different yeah. Opinion. yeah, but if there's no friendship there or bonds, it's like it, you know, it, nobody wants to watch that, you know, just like, right because then they're just gonna fight and there's no point for them to ever make up because they actually don't like each other. So it's just like, I, I don't, I mean, I want to see friends have like not necessarily conflict, but I don't get along with all of my friends all of the time. We don't always have the same opinions out about things, but we can have a difference of opinion. We can get in an argument and we can come back together. And I think that's what I, I want to see growth. And I think a lot of people, we do love the cat fights, let's be honest. But right. I, you know, you want to see people come back together. And I will say, you always hold yourself together and you don't, I've never, like, some, from what I've seen thus far this season, you you have a really quick comeback, but you don't really lose your temper. You're just like, this right. is what it is. And, and I wish I didn't lose my temper. Tell me wh- how you do it. No, you know what? I do lose my temper, but I think it's because I had like other things going on. I feel like, you know, moving forward in other seats, like, that's the thing. All my seasons have always been very like, family and personal and stuff right. like that so i think that that takes away a lot when i'm in a in the moment with like the eight or nine other girls that's another thing too we were filming a lot with the entire group and it's very hard like to get a word in with like <laughs> nine women. so it's like okay okay you got it you can talk i don't care like you know what so in this like what you're saying a lot of them are fighting for the moment for the camera so it's like okay i'm like not doing this yeah, so. no. I mean, because I mean, you really don't have to because you have such a big storyline, an honest, truthful storyline. Otherwise, you know, we talked about Herman. I think that because of it was great that you addressed that, like mm-hmm. because of all of the rumors in the past seasons. I just feel like, you know, all, the audience wanted to know. I thought it was. Of course. You know, I mean, as no, much as I like, wanted to know, too. I mean, that, yeah. that's the truth, you know, and it's been eight years. And like you said, it was already addressed in season three. And it wasn't really like that, but let's go along right. with it. That's how it played out. Um, and, you know, I guess like in the internet too and things like that. And just like, you know, when the person is no longer here, unfortunately, everybody starts talking, everybody. Because, you know, I think that, you know, even though there were rumors before, nobody really like came clean saying anything because he was a matter of respect and of admiration so like nobody was going to do that but again i think it's so it's it, it's it's silly because that doesn't really define like your character or the kind of person you are no. just because sexuality is different or like i mean i feel he was bisexual not even you know so i don't i don't see why that's something so negative or taboo but like that's unfortunately not. it still is in our community like here in miami in the latin community and like you know if you're like in a certain you know um you know, groups or, or whatever, like it's, it's that, that's what it is. It was like a dark secret. And I don't even know why. I mean, I wish he would have trusted in me and told me, right. Cause I would have totally supported him. And well, you would have stayed, with, you would have stayed with them. If you, if well, said, no, uh-uh, I wouldn't oh, have stayed with them. Mary? No. Never. Uh-uh. Oh, okay. Oh no, no, no. I wouldn't have stayed okay. with them married ever, but I would have loved them the same as a person. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I wasn't going to think any less of him or take advantage or like, Oh, like, talk ugly or dirty about him because that's not the case. But I'm just saying that I wish I would have known because I wanted him to know that it was okay. Like that's not a reason why you obviously that is a reason why you separate or get divorced. Right. Because I mean, that not, wasn't going to like, you know, and then it's not that, I mean, I know there's women, they may do it, but like, that's just not me. Cause you know, that was the other thing. A lot of people's perception was that I knew about it. Right. And that I was part of it. And I even heard rumors that I participated in like other stuff, you know, with them. Right. And I was like, no. So I need <laughs> to clear my name because you know what? If it was true, yeah. I would have owned it because I'm that person. You know what? Right. I liked it. I did it and blah, blah, blah. But that's not the truth. Right. So I don't care. I would say it. But the fact that everybody was saying it and, you know, after he passed away, I went through litigation with his kids and they were the ones that said, oh, gave me a lot of information. So, but to hurt me, you know, they did it malintention to hurt me because oh. of money, the thing to prove that the father and I were together. 
But so I'm like, oh, really? So you did this. So you know what? Now, six, five or six years later, I'm ready to talk about it. And it's my story. And I was married to him for 15, 16 years. And this is what it is. I mean, I don't know that, you know, you saw everything, obviously. Right. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, I didn't want it. I didn't want to make it about that. And like you said, everybody knew about you know how these shows are. Like, it's your story and you yeah. have control of your narrative. So this was the truth. I already found out about the lover after he died, you know, all these things. And I wanted closure and like, you know, moving on, you'll never hear me talking about it again. Right. You know what I mean? Because it's not, you know, I'm in a new stage of my life. You know, I'm married. I'm super in love with my husband. Like, you know, it was part of my past, but it doesn't really define anything about my No, but it's nice right to now. put a cap on it for other people to be like, okay, I'm better with this. I figured this out. We're almost kind of out of COVID and these days we could all use a little more self-care. FitOn is the number one free fitness app designed to help you achieve your health and wellness goals and fit in some much needed me time. I'm telling you, what's good for your body is good for your brain. I, over COVID, gained 21 pounds and was just not in my best mental state. But once I started working out from home, I found like everything got brighter. My happiness was more, I was happier with my body, my head was clearer, and it's just so easy. And by the way, it's free, because we all know it was hard to work during COVID. Fit on workouts are always free to use, and they have workouts available for all fitness levels, which I'm like at a zero. Um, you can work out as short as five minutes a day, so there's no excuse to skip. Whether you're a busy parent like me or a working slash non-working professional with a busy slash non-busy schedule, Fit On will make sure you will always be able to make your workout. Take classes with world-class trainers in a variety of workouts, styles, cardio, fitness, hit, strength. I don't know what hit is. I think that's probably punching, which I don't need to do. Um, strength training, toning, Pilates, yoga, kickboxing, bar, and there's so much more. Like I didn't even know half these things existed. There's no equipment necessary, no gym membership necessary. And so that means that there's no excuses not to be doing at least something five minutes a day. So join over 10 million people getting their fit on. Work out for free anytime, anywhere. Text fitness to 64,000 to join fit on for free. That's fitness to 64,006. Four zero zero zero. Ooh, that's smart. Um, that's fitness to sixty four thousand. No more excuses, people. We can all do this. I mean, obviously, probably his kids aren't super excited about it. But I thought you did it in a very classy way. You didn't. Right. You didn't say anything no, negative from about a good him. Case, from a good right. place. I also wanted to know that you know what? I'm so happy for him that he got to do what he apparently has wanted wanted to do for right. many years in his life. You know, some people die without never coming out of the closet and from I know. never experience something they wanted to experience, which to me is like horrible. Like, how can you do that? And something like that, because I mean, I'm just saying, you know, you may want to do something that's bad for you, but that's not something that's bad for you. So, no. but you know, and, and talking to his lover, I was able to like, he answered all these questions that I wanted to know. And uh, I needed to know that I wasn't ready at the moment that I found out about it after his death. Because emotionally, I wasn't strong enough. But five, yeah. six years later, now, which is when I have the conversation now, it made sense to me because I was stronger. I can handle it. You know, we laughed together. We cried together. He answered a bunch of things. My most important question was, was he ever going to tell me? Was he ever going to have a face-to-face -face with me and tell me? And the man said, no. He's like, he no, because he, he, didn't, he didn't want to lose. He didn't want to lose you. I feel like there's like some men want their cake and eat it too. And I'm not saying that that's right. a greedy no, thing, you're right. but, yeah. mm -hmm. but he wanted to keep this beautiful wife that made him happy. But then he had to like go and explore this part of himself that if he had never done it, he would, you know, God forbid he would have died never knowing like yes. what that experience was like. And I don't think it's right because I think cheating is wrong in any right. way. But well, we were legally separated. I mean, we weren't legally separated, but we were separated. We have been separated since 2015. So we separated in 2015. Oh, and we kind of like took some time off. We never talked about anything. He's just like, you know what? He was going out. He was, having, you know, and I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm not happy. You're not happy. And we both decided, you know what? We're both amazing. 
you deserve to be happy. You deserve to have fun. You've gone through so much. Same thing here. So in very, like, in a very amicable way, we even still work together. We said, okay, we'll take some time off. And the time off turned into a year and three months, which is like where he passed away. So we never had that conversation about divorce. We never right. had a conversation about cheating, but technically we were separated and I was dating other people too. I was single right. I was yeah, having yeah. Fun, and so was he. But again, like, so we yeah. weren't cheating. He wasn't cheating. Right. I wasn't cheating, but. Okay, I yeah. didn't. I, I I was not aware of that. I thought it was like when you guys were happily married. So that yeah, I don't think that's cheating either. Because once we were separated, I was like, I'm getting dick as much as I right. can. And you go, you're clearly doing your thing, honey. Oh my, I'm gonna 100%. do mine. <laughs> yeah, right? no, no, and we kind of knew it. I just didn't think it was with a guy. You know, I said, you know what? Right. Like, I even thought like maybe one day that he's like really like fucked up or whatever, like he's having an orgy or like a Chris some crazy threesome or something like that. But I never thought. Honestly, that he was in a relation, in a romantic relationship, not right. only physically but emotionally with a man. Right. That he fell in love with a man. That's like what happened. You know, yeah. I mean, I said, you know what? He had a crazy moment. A lot of people do. I don't really care about that. But to the extent that this went on and like how involved they were, it was really shocking to me. Well, I mean, I, I think that you cleared it up in a really classy way. And something that's not classy though is. Adriana and her, their flirtation with the the wife of Natina. I, or I can't ever say her name. What, how do you say? It? Yeah, Julia. Well, her name is Julia, and her and her wife is Martina. Not Martina. Martina. I Brandy, mean, we I, need you on the show. We need you on girl. the show. When are you coming to Miami? Because none of, <laughs> let us talk about this. You're absolutely right. So we it we is have. So you know, wrong. I think in next season we will we'll talk about more about these things because we didn't talk about these things. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it, no, it's tacky. It's shocking. I don't like it. You can tell Martina is not comfortable with it, even if she signed up for it. I feel like they maybe made a plan to do this, to have a storyline, but it's crossing the line of being disrespectful to the wife. And she, that Adrian, Adriana, I like to watch her on TV, but she's crazy. Like, I, yeah. love, I love the crazy, but. I, if she got in my bath and was splashing water, I don't know. I might have choked her. I would just yeah. be like, okay. No, I I, she just, she, she's a lot. But you see, that's why. And, you know, I like Adriana. And Adriana's yeah. only been nice to me. You know, we have never had a, a problem with her. You know, she's, you know, always been very loving and supportive about me or to me. So it, it's hard because... You know, she has like two sides of her. So she has yeah. that side, but yet she's very intelligent and you know, she you know, she she knows about everything. But then I have a problem when she's criticizing Larsa for OnlyFans <laughs> and showing her butt and this and that when you're for free jumping in a right. bathtub and nobody asks you to, because at least they're asking Larsa, she's getting paid for it, but you're doing this for free. Like uh, what yeah. makes you any better? So it's like don't, you know, like I don't judge and criticize other people if I'm doing the same thing or worse. No. So and I it, it just feels contrived to me. It feels like it's a storyline. Like they made, that's the one, like out of everything, I feel like everything's pretty authentic. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I like to watch. But right. that particular story between the two of them, I just, I just don't buy it. And I feel like it's, it's a camera time thing. And, you know, I love watching her when she goes crazy and doesn't make sense because I think it's hilarious. Right. <laughs> I mean, and she's not going to mess with you because you're her friend. You know, right. I, like, and I like the new girls. Yeah, I, think I want to ask her, Adriana, why do you do this? Like, I don't <laughs> understand. But you see, Julia and Adriana's story turned into like a friendship story. In the beginning, when Adriana started talking about it, was like, oh, I'm back. I'm single. Like, I'm questioning my sexuality kind of thing. Um, which kind of was shocking to me, but then at the yeah. same time, nothing shocks me about her. Um, so I was like, oh, you are? And I'm like, like, I know you like dick. And we know you like penis. Right. And we know you're like a super flirt with guys. So I don't know why you're doing this, but she was sticking to it. Yeah, so, but you, you can't know, question your sexuality with somebody else's wife. That's the well, difference. Well, that's the only thing too, <laughs> right? And that's the other thing too. And it was like, not only that, and not, but I even asked her, I said, but have you tried it? Like, how do you even know you like that? You know, it's like, I feel like you need to try it before making such a strong comment like that because right. it's not like we're, we're, you know, you know, we're at an age that we should know what we like by now, right? Right. <laughs>
Guys, are you like me? Do you know what's better than a coffee break? Uh, a vacation break, a beach break. We all need it. It's time where we need to start traveling again. And I know we're all in dire need of a getaway just to clear our minds, see some sunshine. So when I want to book a beach vacay, and I do right now desperately, I use cheapcaribbean.com. I like the all-inclusive life, no having to carry cash around, and Cheap Caribbean has great deals on incredible all-inclusive beach vacations throughout the entire Caribbean, Central America, and Mexico, including Cancun, Jamaica, Los Cabos, Punta Cana, Aruba, and more. So for less money, fewer worries, and more beach, book today at cheapcaribbean.com. Book today and get a next level beach vacation at Breathless Resorts and Spa by Amare. I think I'm saying that right, Amre, A-M-R-A. <laughs> Amre Collection, go look it up. A, capital A, M, capital R, and then an A with two little dots over it. Collection, less money, less worries, more beach when you look at cheapcaribbean.com. But anyways, but so it was all weird to me as well. But then the way it played out was that they were like, they have like this bond and this friendship on this like, you know, different like cosmic kind of love kind of thing. So, All right. you know, I, I, mean, I don't know, you know, if Martina's okay with it, you know, I guess, you know, I, I, I'm i okay with it too. It, you know? it, just, like, it doesn't like, seem like she is. Like when they cut to her faces and her looks, I'm sure she said, yeah, go ahead and pretend to flirt. But I don't think that... I, it would just bother me. I mean, you can tell, you can't fake the annoyance on her face. So, right. I mean, I do no, like, I I like that everyone. That would bother but. me as well. I agree with you and I think that as well. But I feel like um, Julia's always told me that she's the jealous one because I asked her that, you know, because I'm friends with her as well yeah. with Julia. And yeah. I said, but is Martina jealous? Because I saw that too. And she goes, no, she's really not jealous. You know, the jealous one is me. Like, if I see Martina doing this, I'm the jealous one. I said, oh, that's interesting. So, you know, like you said, you know, maybe like Martina thinks, oh, like I draw this little threat to me. You know, like, right. you know, Julia's like my woman and we love each other. And like, you know, it's and I, and I feel like at the end, you know, that's like what I've seen. It's kind of like Julia and Adriana have like this friendship bond. And that's all it is. Well, yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem like it's. I just, it doesn't seem romantic. It seems like they're wanting to like poke fun like it is romantic. But I mean, I oh, don't okay. think that they're, you know, it just looks like they're faking it. I don't know. Like they're faking being pretend girlfriends like for the camera. And that's fine. I mean, I don't, I don't care. Like do whatever you right. want, but I just like watching authentic TV. That is my thing. And, and I do love Adriana when she's crazy because she doesn't make a bit of sense. And I'm like, right. Oh, she, she has not changed from what I used to watch her. And she right. is hilarious. No, she is funny. And you know, you always have to have like a fun one like that in the group, like some, you know, fun, crazy one that's not afraid to say anything, you know, to say anything and like not make sense <laughs> and be okay with it. You right. know, I'm just glad it's not with me. You know, maybe next season no. it will be. You know what I mean? I feel like, you know, I feel like next season you'll see more of us, more like, you know, closer, tighter, more like girl time. You know what I mean? More like, you know, just like between us, you know, cause I feel like right. when there's new girls in the group, it's kind of like, not that there's a division because I think, you know, it all worked out really great and beautiful actually. But, you know, I feel like we'll be more comfortable like the new ones with the older ones. I feel like maybe we were a little bit intimidating like the OGs with the new. With I the mean, newbies. it's hard. It's always hard to be the new girl coming in. Cause you, you right. never feel like you quite fit in and, it is like a middle-aged gang. That's how I felt when I went in. I was right. like, they hate me from the day I entered. And they don't even know me just because I'm new. And I see that on every franchise. They're always a little bit mean to the new girls. Yes. But, you know, eventually it all evens out. And I, we have to go. But I have one more question to ask you. All right. You bitches are all so skinny. And you just went through covid and I gained so much weight during COVID. I turned on my TV and you guys are all like still perfect. How did you stay skinny during COVID? Well, I don't think that I stayed skinny. Well, we had the gym. I live in a building. So I would go to the gym and I would walk. So that, that's all I, I would really do. We have like, I'm in really close by to like, they call it the circle. So I would just like walk like three times a day. Like really it was like for my mental sanity because I don't right. want to be locked up in here. And it was like the only thing that we can obviously do was like just exercise. So I did that. 
And like Todd, he eats really healthy. So like I've gone skinnier like with him because he has really good eating habits. I don't eat as much as like Cuban and Latin food anymore. I, love I just eat like clean food. But um, I pretty much, I think it's just like that, you know. I mean, besides that, like in COVID, you guys, I think in California had a lot more restrictions. But yeah, I was going to say in Miami, you like, guys didn't even really believe in COVID because I went to Miami twice because I had a sick friend I had to go to see, oh, and yeah. no one had masks on, and everyone was out, and I'm like. I was like with my mask, with my gloves, scared to death. Plus, I was visiting in a hospital, so I was right. already nervous. And I was just like, oh, my God. oh, so you guys know there's no COVID in Miami. None. Right. Don't there. <laughs> we don't get that here. No, but I, I think freaked. that had a lot to do with it, too, because you guys were really like restricted and in, inside your homes, you know, but yeah. we, once, we only had that for pretty much like three months. Then after everything started opening, you know, we started having more like a normal life. So things were open. Yeah. So, yeah, because I can see like being really confined to your house a whole freaking year, how you, I would gain weight as well. I, I did. I, I gained weight. Off. Yeah. I gained weight. I was like very mentally unhealthy. I mean, I was yeah. watching the news a lot. They had us scared to death here. I mean, as we should yes. be, but it just took a big, like, like, I don't know. It was just hard on me and my family. Right. And I think, yeah, you no, know, I, I, mean, I feel like, like you're saying it was really a bit, it was mental. I mean, it was a lot. I mean, like everything is our psych. So it's like, you're listening to the news. You can't see anybody. You're inside a house. So I can see that that happened to me in the beginning, but then I just got control of myself and I said, okay, like this is going to be longer than what's expected. I need to like get my shit together. I'm walking. I walking is like really therapeutic. All right. Instead of making donuts myself now, I'm going to call you and be like, tell me to get outside and walk. Because I was going yes. from my bed to my couch, to my bed, to my couch, to my kitchen, yeah. like cooking like crazy. Viste yeah. empanizado, ropa vieja, like oh everything. Oh my God, Enrico. I know. I started doing that too. And Todd's like, stop cooking. You're going to get so far, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, it's, it's the only thing that would make me happy and like comfort. Like I was like, me too. Cheers. I don't know how long this is going to take. But then afterwards, I was like, okay, things are getting better. And I started walking. I mean, at the circle that I go to, I always say it's like the skinny bitches that, jo- that they all walk. Every time I see somebody super skinny, I'm like, what do you do? What do you, what's your exercise? They're like, we walk. And I'm like, of course you do. How many times? They just like walk and walk and walk. So I was walk those- and do cocaine, walk and do right. cocaine. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, okay. the Adderall, whatever it right. is that they drink, right? Right. That's every single soccer mom in California. All right, babe. Well, we have to go. It was so nice to talk to you. I can't wait to watch the end of the season and the reunion. And hopefully I am coming back out to Miami to see my friend again. So hope I'll text you. We'll hook up. Text me. Absolutely. I would love to see you. We'll take you out. All right, babe. Have a good one. Okay. Bye. 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 What did you think? Okay, so from what I learned, yeah, she, she has a son that had a some kind of incident. She, <laughs> okay, no, like he, I think it was a really bad car accident. It was like in a coma for a year or something. But he's he's okay now. He's he has special needs, but he's he's much better. Oh my gosh! But she's like they, they he will probably live with her for life. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Jeez. But it also seems like she really loves you. And you never told me that. I mean, obviously, you said when we introduced her that you met her, but I didn't know this. And (laughs) Um, do you you don't know any of the housewives? You don't watch any of the shows like I don't. Whatever. She loves you. She loves you so much. And you need to now you need to go to Miami and hang out. Yes, we'll go on like happy terms instead of COVID terms. But no, she's I mean, her life is so she could do. Just a movie on her whole life. I mean, absolutely. You wouldn't yeah. believe it. It's too much. It's, it's too, too much. much. Stuff. Right. And, and I wonder, like, you asked a question that had something to do with it, something like, how do you keep it together and keep your, you know? And I wonder if it's because of all this stuff. Trauma and, tr- been, and trauma. It's, and trauma. And, like, and then she just lost her mom. She just lost her husband. Just lost the, his father. Like, it's just like. Any one of those things, my son, you know, the yeah. marriages, was I married to somebody who was, any one of those things, I would be in a straitjacket. Just, I feel like she's yeah. so strong and so positive. I just feel like I yeah. just love her. And so then when like a housewife issue comes up, she's just like. <laughs> like, this is nothing. Yeah. It's like, like you guys work you, it out. Yeah, you figure it out. Like, stop it. <laughs> no, she just like, she really doesn't get involved unless 
she unless it's about her or she's defending a friend but that's what i like like she lets people fight their own fights good she's got too much of her own shit happening 100%. yeah wow so anyway. i think she needs her own show she she yeah. she should yeah she was great i love yeah. her all right me too all right Hi. haiku time haiku here we go all right it drops i know <laughs> Food, food, the magical mood enhancer. Chicken, beef, and pork, too. Put it on a fork and say moo. But fork is oink. <laughs> beef, and it didn't still, work out. Still with good. Beef. It's yeah. still good. Bye, everybody. I'll take it. Bye. I'm out. Brandy's out. Thanks for listening to Brandy Glanville Unfiltered. Download new episodes every week, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And be sure to leave us a rating and review. And while you're at it, check out some of the other great shows available on Straw Hut Media.